in those days, virtually all of them were taken and being worked. A lady lives further down the road. Um, the time that me and my brother shared the allotment, her husband and his brothers and their father all had allotment and they worked them, you know, pretty well really. We're going back 40, 45 years here. The whole family had quite a lot. The, the allotments was actually producing. I think they would grow stuff to sell as well as for the family use. You know, weed spread obviously and seed spread, don't they, and then whatever. So when most of the site's tidier, it wouldn't be anywhere near as, as wild as it's been because it's been left for years, hasn't it? I'd been on the allotment waiting list for, I don't know, five years or something like that. Eventually, they started asking people if they were interested in regenerating this one. We came to view the site with the parish council, walked around one December morning and looked at it. And it, it seemed complete madness to try and grow vegetables in a three acre woodland. But it was so beautiful that everybody was captivated by the idea. And I just absolutely love it. So I got the plot in on the 1st of April 2016. That was when they were handed over. Um, and as I started to clear the ground, I, there was a big a load of branches all piled up. And as I dragged them away, I could see that the soil underneath was fairly clear. It wasn't full of weeds. So I just put a length of weed suppressant material down, cut holes in it, put some spuds in the holes. And that was the very first thing I grew. I thought if I'm going to grow nothing else, I'm going to grow some potatoes. Um, and I did really well out of those. That was the first thing I did. And then I just started buying little plug plants from from home base and DIY places, garden centres, and just tried different things. So last year there wasn't much. Um, the thing is, to once things start growing faster than they can get eaten, so the sprouts, the brassicas are under the, the net tunnel, and they're doing all right under there, but if they're out in the open, they just get eaten. But you have to grow things that you like eating. I mean, that's the other thing. So I tried sweet corn last year, and that actually worked. I couldn't believe I could grow sweet corn. Uh, I mean, mange too grow really easily, and they're so expensive to buy, and I mean, I won't buy air freighted veg anyway. So to be able to have a long crop, and you can just, you only pick two or three a day, and you think, oh, that's nothing. But then over the course of three or four days, you've got enough for a portion. And the thing is just to just enjoy that, <laughs> just enjoy that little bit. The thing with the harvesting is just, we haven't planted loads of any one thing, and you just have to be grateful for whatever you can get. Never been able to grow carrots in my life, and we've grown them this year in um, tyres with liner in, and they've grown really well. And again, the tyres were left here, and you think, oh, do I take them to the tip? Or we think, well, we'll see if we can use them. So yeah, you get to start reusing and recycling a lot more. The first thing we did was hack the grass down with like a, a size, and then because we wanted to grow potatoes, we were turning the sod up. One of those things I learnt as, as a child, and I've always, if I planted potatoes, I've always managed to put some sod in the bottom. So we tried to make beds, level it out and make some beds, um, but there wasn't a lot of topsoil. You were soon into subsoil. We tried growing potatoes and um, beans and radishes and you know things like that. You could go and ask anybody if you were wanted some information or um you know if you were struggling or and they might say, "Oh, we've tried them, and they, they, they just won't grow here or something like that, so you you know you moved on to something else then Part of the reason for getting a larger plot was the whole idea of um a wildlife sanctuary as well as growing vegetables for me. I wanted to have a diversity of wildlife so that's why I've left some of the grasses long for creatures to hide in. We've got slow worm, we've got toad. In terms of mammals there's obviously a, either a fox or a badger because my dog's been rolling in the poo for the last few weeks and we get a lot of birds. As soon as you start digging the birds come flying down to peck over the soil. Blackbirds and robins and we've made a pond from the tractor tyre that was left on the site. 
I've got a 12.99 Amazon water feature, <laughs> solar fountain to keep the water clear. We have put it in this year in a, in a little plant and the water is much clearer than it was last year. We had a frog in it the other day and then we've made a wildflower bank. So on the banking there we've planted herbaceous flowers and shrubs to attract bees and butterflies, which is working. And it was as important to plant flowers as it was to plant vegetables. Um, because without bees and insects and butterflies in the world, we're nothing. Uh, there was some dams and trees on there. There was sort of self-seeded things, I think, that had grown. We did get a bit of fruit. If you've got dams and trees on your plot, you should look forward to a, a decent har harvest off that. Depends what happens to the blossom in springtime. If you get particularly strong winds at the wrong time of the year, um, then it becomes a pure harvest, but I think this year is a good year for fruit. Seems a good year for apple trees and things like that. The couple who used to have the allotment planted these fruit trees, and I believe their daughter, their late daughter, was a horticulturist who looked after them. So uh, I was quite conscious that there was a family connection to the trees for them, for them, and I didn't want to damage them so we've pruned them quite carefully spent a lot of time researching how to prune them um, there's a Victoria plum tree which has lost a branch this year actually there were so many plums on it the branch collapsed and then it got silver leaf and it withered so we've had to cut a branch off but the rest of the tree still looks healthy my mum bought me the shed as a treat for my getting an allotment so we had a shed party when I opened the shed and we have friends for picnics here, um, which is lovely. It's really therapeutic. It's just it takes your mind off everything else that you're doing. You just entirely focus on the gardening, and you don't worry about anything else. Well, it's nice that those those courgettes are growing a bit more now. There's only a couple um, here a couple of weeks ago, and they'd kept on one or two of them had kept on dropping off just there. I don't know whether it was due to like all of this white sort of speckled stuff that's going on in the leaves. It'd be nice to eat some of these because it feels like they're the first like proper crop that we'll have had after just all of these broad beans which are all done now. And they were they were like blighted by black fly quite a lot so we didn't even get that many of them. <laughs> but these look like they'll be really tasty <laughs> and everyone says oh anyone can grow courgettes so it's really encouraging that we can at least hit base level <laughs> one of the things that Sarah suggested that we do to to add in that 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 other kind of artistic sense to the allotment was to paint the words of a poem around the beds and so the words here are from Rumi who's a Sufi mystic um, and they say, your song, a wished for song, goes through the ear to the centre where sky is, where wind, where silent knowing, put seeds and cover them, blades will sprout where you do your work. We're going for a few days, won't we? When, when you plant potatoes, because you work in the soil so much, digging it up in the first place, then I mean, obviously you're planting the potatoes in and with manure, you're digging to lift them, and so it, it gets rid of all the rubbish out of the soil and conditions it and makes it into far better soil. And I've got such a depth of soil as well now because, because I've worked it. It all encourages it for growing all, all the things in the future. One of the old tricks I learnt because I'm, I'm a farmer born and bred and so it was a thing that you know we always did on the land and uh, it was all, always noted by all farmers that potatoes cleaned the land up. In reality it, it, it is on the hillside um, and so getting a good depth of soil is hard. I mean that top in there that's the reason for building me, me chicken coop there that it, it was really so, it was really an area that wasn't really usable as planting as such because there was a lot of screen in it you know so it was all just stone and uh, I mean, there's a big, 
there's a big piece there you can see which is rock that's just solid rock there by the shed door I made sure when I, when I built the coop it's got a, a big wire netting all the way around it a wire netting gate it's got wire netting over the top so nothing can get in it, it's totally secure because um, it was something I was I was uh, quite well up on that I mean obviously you're out in the wilds here any, anything could I mean foxes are well noted for getting into hens and foxes will climb and climb you know you might think you've got it up high enough but the foxes will still climb up and, until they actually get in and if they get in you know, your hens have just gone there would be rabbits about in them days I'm sure there was rabbit holes and that sort of thing but also people used to catch them. A rabbit burrow, there's obviously a series of entrance holes. So a rabbit catcher would net all the entrances that he could find and then put the ferret down. And the ferret would obviously disturb the rabbit so they'd make a boat for it and run straight into the net and he'd be there to just wrap them up. And, and that was rabbit pie then, wasn't it? You know, it was a bonus if what we got off it. Their sort of nickname, if you will, is the poor man's allotments because they, they were just some allotments that were used for years ago. But then, I suppose general trends, you know, they, they died off you know, and people people moved on and stopped using them and so they, they got re massively overgrown. Then Anne's done a fantastic job in getting people interested in them again. Uh, and slowly but surely we're starting to pull them around and I believe there is a waiting list for them now which is great, you know, really, really good to see because, I mean, obviously, the more people we get on here, the more the whole site in general is going to, uh, going to grow and just persevere from there.